Okay, I just wanted to do a quick recording um, about what housemates will do to you. Um, I woke up early on Saturday to go to a special event, like a special cultural happy family event that celebrates clean water and when I got to the bathroom my housemate tried to come in on me and then um, so I was like I'm about to take a shower do you need to get in here and she said sure so I gathered all my stuff got out and then she like walks behind me in the hallway and like is heading downstairs and then I'm like aren't you going to go in here and then she's like no so I took all I took I'm on my way out and you know she got me rattled and then she got me disoriented and then she got me to cater to her and then she didn't want what I was catering so then I had a really nervous shower instead of a relaxing one and that's um, triggering because uh, my dad used to pound on the door when I was in the shower growing up and, and like open the door and yell at me Um, and then when I got out, I announced that I was out because that's what she likes to do, so I was frustrated and also mirroring, I guess. So I made a big announcement, even though it's easy to tell. Um... And then I also announced that, you know, I got all her reminders. Oh, she, because she asked if I was taking a shower for work this Saturday. And, um, I think this week she has asked me four times. And maybe every single day to sign up for this, um, temp agency. And I have a job, I have a really good job working for a tribal government that she's distracting me from being able to do. I work from home. So every day she disregards that and makes me feel all bad. I don't know why I feel bad. I just read this post on supposedly a support group from somebody who's leaving saying because people externalize onto others too much and I am taking that to heart because I'm looking at my own behavior. But I also don't bother people. I don't follow people around. I mean the last time it's this confusing roller coaster every time we try to be nice sorry my cat is <laughs> contributing <laughs> you're a good girl hi okay um yeah I don't follow them around and give them unsolicited advice I don't do that to anybody. Well, okay, I lie. I probably have tried to give advice gently when asked or when somebody's really upset. I also learned from my best friend 
that about not giving advice and just listening. And I changed. I have really bad training from my parents about how to relate to people. What I thought re was relating apparently turned out to be annoying sometimes. And I, I learned that, like, I learned that at work big time over five years ago, and I've been changing since then, and so I don't follow them around, I don't do their dishes, I don't grab their dishes out of their hands like they do to me, like, I thought we were relating, I thought we were having a normal conversation until at the end of it, she snatched my my dish away and was like, I'm gonna wash this. And then it's like, all right, well, I already had like six other things to wash. So I'm like, all right, fine, you wanna wash the one dish and feel good about yourself. I'll just try to be graceful about that. And then I'll carry on with my plan until she snatched the pan I had on the stove that was soaking with water and like dumped it all over the floor and then did a bad job cleaning it and put it away dirty. I feel like I'm being terrorized by this woman. So today when I get out of the shower and I'm like, I'm out of the shower and I, you know, thank you for the, all those tips. I, I really remember them. I remember your friend, Samson Gregorian. I will, I just wanted to be really clear. She didn't need to keep reminding me. And I was a little frustrated but I was trying to mirror her. I was, I was at the end of my rope. It, it is, I don't need a reminder about lack of money to be able to move out of here every single day from the person who is harassing me. Especially after I listen to her sob stories. And I try to be really nice and patient when she keeps doing, saying things over and over. I guess that's my problem. I try to be nice too much. But when I try to confront her, I wasn't even trying to confront her. That's, I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was in panic. I was in my towel. And she comes out of her room before I even finished getting, stepping out of the bathroom door in her towel and says, tells me that I'm coming across very sarcastic and if I don't like her, then I don't have to talk to her. What a fucking double bind that is. First thing in the morning on a Saturday, coming from somebody in a towel. I, I don't even know how to process that. It was so intimidating. And then I'm in my towel. I'm just trying to get to my room and get dressed. But she was doing it like a dare. It was like a dare to like, it was very intimidating. How am I supposed to not talk to my housemate? I'm not starting that shit. I've been 
polite, overly polite, impatient, and I'm not, I mean, if it needs to be that way, yeah, I guess I can put up that stone wall because I learned how to do that from my parents, from my father. But my whole freaking point in doing this is to be able to communicate, be honest, not have a panic attack every time that I need to make a statement and, and not be a doormat. My whole point is to be able to communicate honestly so that people can work together, so I can work together with people, and so that I don't let them behave maliciously toward me or others. Because if I just sit there and don't say anything, it's like a pass. It's like a reward for them almost. But maybe that's not a reward. Maybe that's what I have to do. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm giving it way too much energy, supply. So she bullied me in her fucking towel first thing in the morning with a double bind. And then I called my friend for help that I was supposed to be. Never mind. Never mind him at all. The person I called for help made it so much worse. I shouldn't have trusted him. But I did make it to the event. It was very beautiful and peaceful. And there are very beautiful families there who loved each other. And I kept thinking about Pete Walker saying in his book about CPTSD from Surviving to Thriving, how when he saw families that loved each other, it was kind of heart-wrenching. And it was. It was. But I'm so grateful to have made it. Practiced. Just, just practiced letting this stuff go. Getting out of the house, getting away from these negative influences. maybe it was another step towards community and maybe somewhere a stepping stone towards a better job or, or more work I should say it's not appropriate to be looking for a job at this type of event but I hope it's okay to be looking for community. I think that's what it's for. I gotta go. I gotta figure out how to survive. But I thought it was important to give an update on the housemate situation and on me to let you know I, I'm I'm still real and I'm trying to do this. I guess I feel like I'm on my own. I but it kind of helps to know that other people are out there also trying to do this. And I salute you all for trying. I salute you all for trying. I hope. Yeah. And I'm going to go with gratitude.
gratitude. We wish everyone the best. And and knowing and when I say that, and knowing other people out there kind of helps me try to rise above and, and do my best too. Thank you.